Hello friends, welcome back to SQL with Manoj. Today we'll be talking about nominal constraint, check constraint and default constraint. In our previous videos, we talked about integrity constraints of our database, what exactly they are and how they make sure to keep the to keep and maintain the database integrity. Then we talked about the classification of those integrity constraints and in separate videos we saw how they work like the primary key constraint, the unique key constraint and the foreign key constraint. So today in this video we'll see how we can work with not null constraint, the default constraint and the check constraint to maintain the whole database integrity of our database. Okay. So let me take you to SSMS where we can practice with the, the simple example. I'm going to use a database testman DB. So this is an empty database. There are no tables created. So what I'll do is I'll create an employee table. Okay, so my table is dbo.employ with employee ID as the primary key and with the identity property of uh, 101. So the IDs will start from 100 and increment by 1. So whenever I have to insert the records, I don't have to provide the employee ID. I have a second column as employee name. The data type is envir care and the length is 100 and the gender is in care. So I'll just so I'll just store F and M values here. That is for female and male respectively. So there may be more columns in our employee table, but for not null constraint example, I'll be using these few columns. Okay. So if, if I'm, so if I'm going to create just this table, right? So I am not enforcing any rules on this table because if you see here, the employee ID is a primary key, so it cannot be null, right? And employee name. So whenever I'm entering a employee record, so there may be a possibility where I can insert a null record over here right and even in gender I can insert a null record right but while entering the employee record I must be having an employee name so what I want is I want to enforce the rule that you know whenever you are inserting employee name the name should not be null so what I can do is I'll just put here not null right so this not null constraint is defined on the employee name column okay so let's see how it works without this constraint Okay, so if I am going to insert a record employee and the column name and the values, let's say I'm not going to store any value over here. Okay, let's see see the values got inserted right so there was not a check while I was inserting records and if you see here there is one record created with null name and null gender so what if you want a check while inserting the records that you know the null, the employee name should not be null right so let's see how we can do that okay I'll drop the table okay and what I'll do is I'll add a not null constraint over here and I create the table again okay so now the table is created okay and let us see if we can insert the null records no it gives us an error cannot insert the value null into column employee name table employee column does not allow null insert fails okay and the statement is terminated right so this is the way you can enforce the not null property in a particular table so that nobody can insert null records right so this is how a null constraint works okay now let us move to default constraint right so uh, let me drop the table over here okay and uh, let me take this same script of the create table and let me put it here default constraint okay so default constraint means if you are not going to provide any value for any particular column a default value will be assigned to it right let's have a column that makes sure that you know the record is active I'm adding a is active column a type of bit okay and what I can do is um, whenever I'm inserting record all the records are normally active right so what I can do is I can have a default value of 1 over here and if I want to track you know when this record was created I can add a column created on the type is 
date time I can also have a default constraint of get date over here and let's also track who created this record created by okay and uh, where care let's say 100 and let's also default it to system user okay so now you can see I have added three default properties on my three columns right so what I did I took the employee table script from above and I added three more columns here right that is is active that will tell me okay my record is active or not and most and as most of the records are active so I have added a default value of one here right so while entering the records I don't have to put the value I don't have to specify the value every time here right created on means when this record was created so I have default so I've provided the value default get date here and created by when who created this record so the data type is varchar 100 and the default is the system user okay system user means from whose login the record is created right so let me go ahead and create this table okay okay first of all let's drop the table and let me go ahead and create this table fine then I can uh, let me reuse the insert script over here okay let me insert a record with an employee data right that is Manoj Pandey and you know as all the columns are default okay and uh, let's say the gender is male okay and as you can see here all the other columns are default so I don't need to specify them in my insert statement right so this is the beauty of it so it gives us it gives you two features one is the values will be automatically inserted okay and the desired value will be inserted into this and second thing is you don't have to specify all these values over here so now, now let's try to execute this statement okay so one row inserted and let's just see the record that is inserted see so as you can see here the last three columns got the values is active equal to one created on today's date time and seconds and microseconds and created by the user who is logged in so you can see my username that is logged in that I have logged in from so this user is tracked over here okay let me insert an another record over here okay and let's see Kanchan Pandey my wife name and she's female so let me insert a second record okay and you can see the second record is inserted after a few seconds and you know these two values are automatically stored here in this particular column right is active is equal to one and created by is the user that I have created okay and gender male female right and employee ID as you can see it is an identity column so these values are automatically generated right so this is the way you can create you can add a default constraint on a particular column in a particular table to make sure if you are not specifying any value the default values will get stored in the in these uh, columns now let's try to insert some explicit values let's say you want to create a inactive record right let's say there is there is some condition where you want to store a record but that record should be inactive right so what you can do here is you can override this default value by putting your desired value right let's say Maria Y female and is active is equal to zero means she is inactive okay so in uh, record got inserted and if you can see here is active is equal to zero so it does not mean that you know when you create these columns with default values only these values will be set you can even have these values and you, you can even create a date based upon some back date right so you can even set a back date over here and you can even set some other user right uh, let's let, let's take an example of it also okay now the username is Brock H and he is male the 
yeah let's uh, let's don't give the is active now it will be set automatically i'll put created on and i'll take created by column these two columns okay so i'm not giving is active is active will be automatically set to one what i'm giving is created on okay let's give a date that is like a year back so i'll just copy the date from here and i'll change the timestamp to let's say 2015 first of january okay and created by created by let's say s c o t t scott okay and see the record got inserted with the values that you provided right so default constraint gives you flexibility you know to get the values inserted into the columns that you are not giving sometimes but you know you are making sure that you know those columns will have values every time okay so this is how you can work with a default constraint right and finally we have a check constraint over here check constraint make sure that you know the values that you are inserting into a particular column are from a particular domain or not basically when you are inserting values in a particular column it checks the values you know and it does a check and let let us see how it does the check okay i'm dropping the table and what i'll do i'll is i'll create the table again over here and right now with this check constraint we'll work with the gender column right and you know as you can see here the gender column you can insert the values male or female but you know anybody can insert any value right so here let me you know just try to insert a value x okay let me create this table and see it got inserted so if you can if you see here by doing a select statement the in the gender column some invalid value is added right so what you can do here so it's very simple to add a check constraint you what you can do here is you can check gender in male or female right that's it so we drop the table and recreate this table okay and when i try to insert the value here it says the insert statement conflicted with the check constraint the conflict occurred in the database testman db column gender right so this gives you this particular warning right because the x value is not allowed here only the values allowed are male or female right and you know after adding this check constraint on the gender it will take only male or female values m or f so let's try to insert this okay and uh, just check here right this is successful and if you try to again uh, do this then you will get an error okay so this is how you can work with null constraint the default constraint and the uh, check constraint let me uh, also show you you know how can you check these constraints over here right in the object explorer you can go to the your table and you can uh, check your columns over here okay and this is the column list and if you expand it it will show you the constraint list right so these are the constraints and if you and as you can see here these constraints are named automatically by sql server but you can also keep the name of your constraint right so let me show you how you can do that uh, let me drop all the constraints over here and uh, check constraints so what you can do is you can type c o n s t r a i n n t constraint then the constraint name c k underscore gender or maybe e m p underscore gender right like this and similarly here you can provide a constraint name on default ck underscore emp underscore active and uh, similarly you can provide the constraint name ck underscore emp underscore created on and similarly over here also then created by okay so execute this right and if you refresh it here 
the new table is created with the named constraint that are given by you over here right so it's very simple and let's see if you want to script out this table from SSMS let's see how it generates the script so what I'll do is I'll right click on the table and script table as drop and create to in a new query window if you see here the script type we selected was drop everything and create everything so it is going to drop all the constraints and then finally drop the table okay and then it will create the table right and uh, you can notice right that uh, the constraints are not specified here and even the PK is not specified here PK is specified offline not in line with the column name but in line with the table itself but the constraints are not uh, specified here and not even with the table right uh, they are specified here as an alter table statement separately right so if you want to add a constraint on this particular table you can just specify an a simple alter table statement like this right alter table the table name then add constraint and the constraint name and then you know the type of constraint and for which particular column you want to do right so in this video we saw how to work with the not null constraint how to work with the default constraint and how to work with the check constraint and make sure that our table is free from any type of inconsistent data and the integrity of our table and our database is maintained okay so you can visit my previous videos to check the other type of integrity constraints like the primary key unique key and foreign key constraints uh, thank you very much for watching this video and see you soon with my more videos thank you